Okay, so yesterday I mentioned on my community post smart TVs with RetroArch and surprisingly some of you wasn't aware that some smart TVs have RetroArch but you can actually find this in your apps. Now I'm not going to say that every smart TV has the ability to do this but mine, in my case, works absolutely fine. This is a new Toshiba QLED 50 inch TV and to actually get RetroArch we're just going to go to get more apps and of course smart TVs are going to look different but in my particular case with this Toshiba 50 inch then this is how I'm doing this and once we're here I'm going to just go to games and under game categories I'm going to just scroll over to casual gaming and once we're in casual gaming you should find RetroArch And here's RetroArch. So, like I say, TVs are different with different operating systems. But I'm going to download this. So, if I just press OK on RetroArch, okay. So we're just going to let this install, and it shouldn't take too long. Before we actually go into RetroArch with the TV, I'm also going to pair my Xbox Bluetooth controller with the TV itself. So once we're inside of RetroArch. Instead of using the remote control or the buttons, we can actually use a controller for this. Okay, so that's now been installed. So what I'm going to do is just back out of here. And if I go into my settings menu, I'm just going to find remote and Bluetooth devices. So I'm just going to pair this controller with the TV. And here we go, my Xbox controller is now working with the TV and that's running really smoothly. So what I'm going to do is just back out of here and then go into that RetroWatch app that I've just downloaded. So I'm using my Xbox controller still and I'm just going to go into the apps and here's RetroWatch. And the first thing you're likely going to see is that you need to grant access to read external storage. So of course I've got a USB drive connected into one of the USB ports on the back of the TV and it's just asking permission in order to see what's actually on that external drive. So I'm going to press OK. And we also want to allow it to access photos, media and files. So just go to allow on this. Cool. And here we go. So what it's doing right now on the bottom left hand side is just extracting the contents of it and it's just preparing RetroArch for the first time. Now if you're familiar with RetroArch, I've covered RetroArch on my channel for quite some time. So first thing I'm actually going to do is just check out what cores we got on this and what it can actually run. So to do this, what we're going to do is just go down to Online Updater and I'm going to press B on my controller. And if I go to Core Downloader by pressing B again, everything listed just here should technically work with this TV. So we've got all the obvious ones here. We've got MAME, we've got the Atari 8-bit consoles, Atari ST, uh, Commodore Amiga, C64, uh, Commodore PET and Commodore Plus 4, even DOSBox. So what I'm going to do to test this out is just download a RetroArch Nintendo NES Core. I'm going to download FCEUMM and if I just press B on this, the core has now been installed. And whilst I'm here, I'm also going to test out and show you Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis. So again, to play these, I need to download the cores. So of course, we're going to look for Sega. And I'm going to download the Sega Genesis Plus GX core, so press B on this. Okay, so actually before going into a game, what I'm going to do is just go to settings and input. If I press B on this, what I'm going to do just here is go to retro pad binds, port 1 controls, and I'm just going to map out and make sure everything's to my liking just here if I want to. And if I press A to come out of here, and A again, what I'm going to do this time is just go down to hotkeys. So hotkeys are going to be a couple of buttons we can press in order to exit games. So if I press B to go in here, enable hotkey, 
I'm going to press down on my left analog stick as well as one of my buttons and that's going to act as the hotkey to exit us from games. And if I just then go down to close content, if I press B to go in here, I'm going to press down on my right analog stick and that can also act as a way to exit out RetroArch. So come out of here pressing A. And now I'm going to want to load up games. So to do this, I'm going to go to main menu. I'm going to go to load content by pressing B. And my hard drive is forward slash storage. It might be different for you, but I'm going to press B on this. And you should see a series of numbers. This represents your hard drive. Press B. And in here is my hard drive. So I'm going to go for a NES game, an absolute classic known as Double Dragon 2. Load archive. Okay, so I just exited out of that game because my controller isn't working properly. So from here, I'm gonna just go to settings and I'm gonna go back to input by pressing B. And from here, I'm gonna set to retro pad binds and press B to go in there. If I go to port one controls, first of all, I'm gonna to go to start button and I'm gonna press the start button on my Xbox controller or the equivalent of start button. And I'm just gonna make sure that these are all mapped out correctly because I did find my start button wasn't working for that. And remember you can go into each one of these by pressing B and it gives you a quick countdown in order to map out your controller. So everything there is mapped out for Nintendo NES. So if I come out of here and main menu, and this time I'm gonna go back to load content to load my game, storage, NES, and load archive. Cool, now my controller is absolutely fine. Cool, so just exit that using my hotkeys. And what I'm gonna do next then is actually open up a Mega Drive game. Before I do this, I'm gonna actually play around with some video settings and see how far we can push this. If we go to settings, and I go to video by pressing A, I'm gonna go down to video filter for this, and I'm gonna apply one of my favorite filters. So I'm gonna go down to scan line two times, and just press A on this. And we can also change the layout or the theme of RetroWatch from here. If I go to settings, drivers, I'm going to stay on menu. It's currently on the auto. I can change this to XMB. If I press A on this and come out by pressing B, I'm then going to go to configuration file. So nothing's lost. Save current configuration. And then I'm going to go down to quit and just reopen RetroArch. Cool, and as we can see, I've now got XMB RetroWatch running on this Toshiba TV. So I've also just applied a filter to a game to play. So I'm gonna go down and load a Mega Drive game up, loads content, and down to storage. And here is my hard drive, Mega Drive, and I'm gonna open up Sonic the Hedgehog 3. So A to open, load archive, complete with scan lines. Oh, <laughs> 
Okay, cool. As you can see, that's working perfectly. Okay, let's take a look at some more video settings. So we just applied a filter which just gave us the scan lines. If you don't actually like having that filter and you want to change it, just go over to your settings, video, and from here, we're going to go down to remove video filter and that totally takes away any filter whatsoever. And if you want to apply another filter, then just go to video filter and I'm going to apply two times sal dot filter for this. If I press A on this one, and whilst we're in here, we can go up to scaling and we got the option here to change aspect ratio. So it's currently on core provided, which is gonna match the original ratio of Nintendo NES games, which is four by three. And of course that's the box image. If you want to change the aspect ratio to something like full, you can apply full just here, like I've just done. And we can also take away pixelation if you wanted to by applying or enabling bilinear filtering. You also got interscale. So if I come out and I go up to load the game again, load content and Android storage and into my NES folder and I'm going to open up the classic turtles and load archive. So if you want to know what I was doing around 1990 to 1991, that's what I was doing, trying to get as far as possible using my friend's Nintendo NES at the time, what a classic game. And I'm just going to mention how to actually import your games onto your TV. So if you did want to do this, just be mindful that your TV might not have much room. So all you need to do is go over to scan directory, manual scan, and I'm going to go to content directory by pressing A. And I'm just going to go down to storage and into my hard drive just there. And I'm going to go down to NES and scan this directory. And if I press up on my D-pad, it will take us to the bottom. And if I press A on start scan, that's going to scan the games. Now, right at the end just here, I can now see my games have just been imported onto the TV. And going back to how RetroArch looks, we've already applied the XMB menu like we've got here. If I go to settings and user interface and just go down to appearance, if I go to shader pipeline and press A on this one, I'm gonna go down to snow and press A. And as we can see, the TV slightly looks like it's struggling with this, but if you've got a higher spec TV, it will likely work a lot more smoother than this one is. We also got color theme. It's currently on electric blue. If I go down to dark, and there we go, we're now changed over to a dark theme. So I'm gonna go back up the shader pipeline and change this to some a bit more simple. Let's try Snowflake. So again, Snowflake on my TV isn't working too good. So I'm actually gonna put this up to Ribbon Simplified. And because I've changed it to a dark setting, we can barely see that now. So again, if I go to Appearance, and color theme, I'm going to change it to light this time, and there we go. And lime green, so lots of colors to choose from.